Hughes is here. He's the head of safety for Uber Advanced Technologies. Now, good to see you. Thanks for coming Thanks in. Ryan. Thanks so lot. Uber grabbed you away. You've been a longtime executive with the U.S. Department of Transportation in December. Talk about this process. And I guess the state of Florida has kind of been out in front. Is one of the progressive leaders on this front? Yeah, Florida has certainly done a great job uh, making the state open and, and welcoming to self-driving testing and development, although we don't have any uh, plans to announce anything at, at the moment. <laughs> Uh, certainly in working with states and, and federal legislators to really try to make the environment conducive to bring this technology to life. Now, and this technology is going on and the testing is out there. Uh, probably one of your biggest challenges, though, I think is just apprehension among people letting them know this is safe and this is maybe different than what you think it is. Is that correct? A a absolutely. I mean, at, at Uber and especially on my, on my team, we have a huge breadth of experience, all sorts of different disciplines and backgrounds on safety. You know, I would literally have rocket scientists on, on, on my team, you know, folks that put rockets into space, folks that put airplanes, you know, in, in the air. And part of doing all that is to make sure we have a broad breadth of experience on safety and bringing those different disciplines to bear. Because putting this technology on the road in a safe way, in a way that the public can understand, is really what this is all about. And that's also what we put forward yesterday was really this, this idea of a safety framework. These are different principles that are guide our certainly approach to development, and we're hoping that the rest of the industry will, will kind of start a conversation around using those, those same ideas. I'm sure one of the biggest questions you get is, how soon is this going to happen? How soon am I going to look next to me and there's a car without a driver? What would your answer be? Yeah, my, my answer is sooner than most people think, yeah. but not in the way that people think about it. The way that we plan to, de to, to deploy and the way that we're working on it is really to solve individual pieces of the problem as opposed to trying to the proverbial boil the ocean. It's really about solving individual problems, doing as much as you can on offline testing, and then bringing that forward to deploying on, on public roads. And so, you know, we believe we're in a position with our hybrid network approach to really be able to get this technology out there sooner. Does that mean it will be in every neighborhood, every state, you know, day one? No. But does it mean that certain pockets will see the technology? For sure. And you've been with the Department of Transportation studying safety. Do you think long term this will be safer once it's implemented? Yeah, I personally believe that. I mean, I've been a safety professional for almost 20 years now. And when I look at the death toll on the nation's highways, the number of crashes, fatalities, you know, we can do better. Certainly there are technologies that exist on vehicles today that will help with that, but self-driving is just a natural extension of all of that. Give me a sense, just about 15 seconds here. This is the first time this conference has moved from San Francisco to Orlando. What, what are we learning here? What do you see at this technology conference? Cer certainly I see a lot of companies really focused on being a little bit more transparent than this in industry has been in the past and really working with regulators, whether they be at the state level and government or the federal level, to really understand different approaches to safety and how we can commonize and, and become together as one community to help the public really understand what we're doing. Nat, it was great to talk to you today. It's a fascinating topic, and I know one that a lot of people still need educated about, so appreciate you coming in. Yeah, happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, I want to show you this facility in Polk County as well. Florida Turnpike Enterprises now invested $42 million in Sun Tracks. Have you seen this? It's an autonomous vehicle testing site, a two and a quarter mile oval track where companies can test their vehicles. No drivers, of course, needed. It's going to allow Polk County to try and land the heavyweights like Uber, like Google, Apple, Ford Motor, and Lyft. The site is right off I 4. It's near the Florida Polytechnic campus. Construction started last year. It is impressive for sure. And of course, driverless cars are not just at those testing facilities. An autonomous semi was also tested on the turnpike right here in Central Florida last month. Now, during this test, the truck was traveling at 55 miles per hour for nearly 10 miles. That test went on with drivers going past it, having no idea that that driver was actually not in the truck. Well, we certainly appreciate NatViews being with us today. We'll continue to follow the developments with the technology. Keep in mind, driverless shuttles, they are coming soon to Lake Nona, one of the many areas you might see this region grow more. Well,